This week we're going to talk about my top 10 permit flies. So this week, Kieran Jenkins has come down from Fulling Mill to uh, bring us some of uh, their top permit selections. So these are my pick of their patterns. We've had a long-standing relationship with Fulling Mill over the last seven to eight years in the fact that a lot of the patterns that we use around the world, um, Fulling Mill um, are one of the only producers of these patterns. So uh, it's been a long-standing relationship and it works very well. It means our clients who are traveling abroad can um, yeah. Can, can get the flies that they need. So, my top 10 permit patterns. It's a bit of a kind of, you know, silly thing to be talking about in some ways because permit are permit. Yeah. Permit are the most depressing fish on the planet. <laughs> I mean, we spend hours and hours fishing for these things and sometimes they'll just, you can make the perfect cast with the perfect fly <laughs> and sometimes they'll just look at it and go, nah, I don't think so. But that's what keeps us going. That's what makes us do this. So, if you decide that you do want to go and chase permit, these would be the flies that I would suggest. <laughs> so we're going to start at number 10 with Del Brown's Merkin. Now this is the original classic permit pattern tied with, uh, with the cross format of the different uh, wool combinations, different colours, classic uh, chartreuse in the middle and the classic rubber legs. Uh, with a weed guard on the front which is really really yeah. important. So this was the original crab pattern if you like uh, the first one that really tried to imitate crabs to actually catch permit on okay. um, it's it's accounted for probably more permit in florida than any other fly yeah. in the universe i mean the various permit tournaments are named after del brown yeah. um, and he, he's one of those great names in permit fishing folklore but yeah so that would be number 10 that would be the fly that everybody should have in their box it's a classic and it still works even though it is an old pattern so, moving on to number nine. Number nine in my book is actually, bizarrely enough, a bonefish fly. Right. So this is the, uh, the Amber Bitters, uh, originally developed by Craig Matthews on Turnip Atoll in Belize. Yeah. Now this is a phenomenal permit pattern in really skinny water. So if you're gonna fish in very, very skinny water, and you've got permit which are very spooky, yeah. uh, this can often prove the difference between success and failure. Okay. Uh, it did for me, funnily enough, so I, actually, I, I have actually caught some permit. <laughs> I'm not talking like I've never caught a permit. So this for me accounted for a really nice permit in Belize, uh, which I was fishing on my bonefish rig. Right. And that fly was the one that succeeded. And what was, what's particularly good about this one is the deer hair, which is tied in just behind the throat there, acts as a really good weed guard, because Turnip has got an awful lot of turtle grass over the top yeah. of the coral and flies get hung up quite quickly okay. and that just acts as a natural weed guard. But it's a really good little rubber-legged critter. So that is my number nine. Number eight is, uh, is the Julia. The Julia is named after the Australian Prime Minister and this is uh, developed in Australia. It's a brilliant combination of all of those little facets of trigger points on a fly. So we've got some rubber legs here, we've got shrimpy eyes, we've got marabou that puffs out of the back, yeah. we've got a, a throat which is, um, gives it good weed cover, and then also we've got a good weight on the front along with uh, the body tied out of a crustaceous brush. So this fly has got an awful lot of movement and it, what is, it's one of those kind of slightly generic uh, shrimpy patterns that shows up really, really well in coral rubble, yeah, yeah. sand flats. So it's a really good all round pattern for that one. Okay. I'm a real fan of shrimp style flies. I quite like to fish a shrimpy type fly because I prefer to be moving the fly slightly rather than just fishing almost like a static crab, um, which was a sort of more traditional way of fishing permit flies. Yeah. So that's a great one. Following on from that, uh, at number seven is the Grim Reaper. Now this is a very similar pattern in some ways. Again, it's, uh, 
it's tied in that shrimpy crabby type format but this one's got far more of a merkin style crabby body that works particularly well because of this little orange hot spot that's tied in the back yeah so that can often be one of those trigger points that um, that permit will see again these are all tied on gamagatsu hooks um, very very strong hooks which you really really need when you're permit fishing yeah. because uh, if there's a way they will get off they will yeah. so that would be number seven coming in at number six is the tan crail crab and this is really just a more of a modern take on the del brown merkin so all tan particularly for uh, the yucatan in mexico okay. this is where this one was essentially developed and uh, it's got a good lead eye so it goes down quickly the the eyes are tied on the top end of the hook which makes it flop down to the ride's point uh, hook point up and that stops it fouling up and getting stuck got a little bit of uh, clear ghost rubber legs there yeah. and this little bit of hackle at the end which um, moves in the water so as you move it in the sand it puffs out and looks like a crab as it yeah. as it flees away. away so that's a that's a really good staple uh, Mexican Belize style crab so coming in at number five is the flexo weedless crab flexo crab was originally developed by a guy called Richard Whitner we believe in the in the US of A and this was the first time that someone took this extended flex material to make a crab body out of so it's sort of compiled by pulling the fibers together yeah. and creates this this really good interesting looking carapace which looks very very crab like yeah. so by then putting the eyes in uh, you've got a very good crab imitation there's a bead inside which gives it its weight and makes it ride hook point up again yeah claws are made from hackles which are then um, cut so they look like small pincers uh, normally a bit of varnish is put on there which yeah. gives them their shape and uh, so that is the that's the original flexo crab which has been a very successful pattern mm -hmm. um, right across the world so that brings me on to number four now number four is the homer shrimpson try saying that ten times after <laughs> you've had a couple of beers homer shrimpson homer shrimpson no too difficult <laughs> so this is another of those all-round shrimpy patterns but this has got some crystal flash in the head um, it's got a lovely uh, pink whipping You've got the shrimpy eyes in the back, and this has got a little bit of a rabbit strip down the front, which gives it really good pulsing yeah. movement. Okay. Um, but again, it's another of those crustacean um, patterns. Permit love crustaceans. So this is, uh, aside from having the most fabulous name, it's actually a very effective pattern as well. So at number three is a fly that I actually devised, um, which is a originally devised as a trigger fish fly but okay. has since actually proved very useful to be a great permit pattern yeah. too. It's called the Gumby Crab and it's named after a, a friend of mine who sadly is no longer with us but he was extremely keen on chasing triggers mm -hmm. which is where I came with this originally. Yeah. So again this was one of those flies that I thought about all of the different elements of other patterns and tried to incorporate all of those uh, elements which other far cleverer people than me have come up with yeah, yeah. and try and put them all into one fly. So you've got your weed guard, you've got your eyes, uh, you've got your hot spot as a target point yeah. and this uh, is also incorporates the keel system. Yeah. Now this, um, this is a really useful way of flipping the crab over. Okay. So essentially we have a piece of nylon that runs over the back of the fly with uh, three uh, tungsten beads on it and what that does is as the fly lands the keel flips the fly over automatically and presents it pincers up and the pincers are made from um, very fine chenille where we have then tied the claws with a little bit of red dye at the end there yeah. and then obviously rubber because rubber's gotta cool, rubber. gotta have a bit of rubber <laughs> so that's the gumby crab and that's that's number three flexor crab number two is the is the Alphonse crab yeah. now this originally uh, was developed by James Christmas as a development of the flexo crab so what he did was he ended up by putting chenille legs into the body and making it a far more uh, convincing style crab fly he added right. the weed guards in the front which really gave it that um, that weedless ability which is really important yeah and also it comes in a creamy color now this is really important on the sand flats and yeah. the sand bottoms that we use, uh, that we have in the Indian Ocean so that is a that's a very effective fly again it works it works very well for whether you're fishing for permit or triggers um, but in this case we're going to use it for permit um, and it is uh, that's my number two that's my number okay. two so my number one is the Avalon fly 
Now the Avalon Fly, again, is a shrimp-based pattern. It was developed by Mauro Ginevri at Cayo Largo in Cuba. And this fly has accounted for more grand slams on permit than probably any other fly in the Caribbean. Right. And this was the first development of the keel system, which I then used on the Gumby Crab. Yeah. So Mauro had spent a lot of time fishing the flats of Cayo Largo, where there are a lot of permit. So he's got a bit of orange rubber legs in there. And this was one of the first flies which moved people away from fishing crab style patterns okay. yeah. for permit and moved them onto fishing shrimps, which you could then move. And the joy of that is you get a much more aggressive take from a permit. Yeah. So they'll come in and they'll chase it and they'll actually hit it rather than having to fish static and right. try and figure out when to strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Avalon fly has just got to be the most successful permit fly that's around. And so therefore, that for me, that's my number one. Before Pete touches this box again, um, we're going to give this away. So if you like, subscribe and leave a comment below. We'll choose a winner in about a week's time and post it on the Facebook page. And as always, we hope you found this video useful. Um, and uh, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.